episode one of Chatting Shit about the Vortex Cup. Um, joined tonight by, uh, well, I'm very tired, but I'm assuming quite a tired Trudy and Phil, because I know they stayed up for the announcement or close to it as well. And uh, James, uh, Holmesy, how, how are you all? Fresh. <laughs> Thank you. Doing well? Thank you. Good, good. Um, I'm quite excited about this cup. No charm. Don't even have to worry about hidden charm users in a low in a lowland nine tails. A lowland nine tails. No fairies. Charm. Okay, okay, okay. No fairies. Right, fine. To me, that means more or less the same thing. I, I feel like charm without stab is is far less threatening. But uh, you know, I, you know, it, it could work out to be useful. Let's let's see. Um, but I, I'm I'm not. Less so threatening, sure. but more surprising. You know, if you're planning for no charm, you're basically saying, guys, I'm not going to plan for charm. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not going to plan for charm. I'm not going to plan for charm. Um, yeah, I'm not going to plan for. Because the thing is, what what other charmers like Raichu, Lipard, Charm Galade. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right, okay. yeah, but I, I mean, I'd like to think I'd have one or two things that would be able to beat Charm Galade just. By virtue of not being crap, but I guess we'll see. Um, anyway, let's uh, let's get on with it. We'll start with uh, with Holmesy. Okay. Well, speaking of no charm, um, let's have a fighter. So my pick is Primate, um, and this is mainly because it was my absolute MVP in Nightfall. Um, it was amazing, and then it was banned, obviously in Labyrinth, so we couldn't use it. There's quite a lot of fighters on the ban list uh, for Vortex, and I think Primate is looking like the best fighter, especially now. I think it's actually got, and it's, I guess this depends on Legacy and Cross Chop, but I think he's got three, maybe even four viable moves. So, opportunity to catch your opponent off guard, maybe. I don't know, maybe. I'm only here to find out what you guys think I should run on my Primate, if I'm being honest. I think, I think we start with Weather Ball. <laughs> <laughs> I um, two of them in the hope of getting all the Stardust. <laughs> um, cr- uh, Night Slash. Phenomenal. Yeah, Night Slash has got to be Yeah. There, I think. And if you get the boost, if you leave Primate and get the boost, you sort of, you've won the game. So there's yeah. always that. And Ice Punch doesn't, well, I, had a, I had a brief look earlier, Ice Punch doesn't do as much as I wanted it to. Um, but it's safer. Uh, so if you look at like uh, close combat, you need close combat to eat Mandibus. Mm. Yeah, Ice Punch Primate doesn't actually beat Mandibus, um, which I thought was a surprise. I thought that would be a, a good win because obviously Snarl is doing not very effective. But I found that with the, clo- with the close combat victories, you've got to land the close combat. Yeah. And if that gets shielded, you're then in trouble. So I think it's a bit of a, I think Night Slash is a must. But I don't know about ice punch or close combat. Depends how risky you are, I guess. I I I think I think all three have options. Uh, all all three are viable. I think cross chop is the least viable. I think it's kind of a middle ground between ice punch and cross chop that sort of does does neither. But I I kind of feel like the nice thing about primate um, I've n- never used one myself, but certainly from from playing versus them. Is that you? F- you feel like um, you feel like because that close combat hits so hard, uh, you, you've, you've got to shield it really. Um, and yeah, I'd, I'd be I'd be saying close combat, and it's because as, as soon as you know your opponent hasn't got close combat, in in my head that would set off alarm bells of like right, well all of a sudden I'm going to win zero shield matchups that I didn't think I was going to win, mm-hmm. and it could change how you play. But I also think if you were Plan, uh, potentially uh, planning a double counter strategy. Um, I think Ice Punch could be handy uh, to catch out things like Dragonite, um, potentially Pelipers, although I don't know whether Night Slash would be better there. Probably would because you've got the boost chance. Um, but I, uh, Dragonite being the, the key one, I guess. Um, yeah, I definitely think an unshielded Ice Punch, if your opponent didn't see it coming, would be good. Um, Ice Punch picks up the Toxie matchup as well. I guess like Toxie is always known as the fighter that beats fighters. So if your Primate can beat a Toxie with an Ice Punch, I think that's a win in the Ice Punch column. But I think I do agree. If you've got Night Slash, Ice Punch, are they shielding your Primate? 
exactly. Yeah. What do you reckon, Trudy? I've not really used it before, but mostly because I've never been forced to. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a certain amount in this cup of there's. Yeah, the long band list is just it's just directing us in certain directions. Um, I think I might go for Polyrath right over, uh, just because it's just it, 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 when I have toyed with it, it's a bit flimsy. Mm. Um, and if you find yourself again in something that you don't want to be against, it just it, it's it's all over real quick and it's a bit awkward. Yeah. But I, I, I think here uh, it's something that James alluded to um, earlier when uh, when, I, when I was chatting to him about it. Um, apart from psychic, t- apart from confusion users, uh, the, the things it doesn't want to be against are quite. It's quite a short list because of the night slash. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like it has to be a really bad matchup for it to not be useful. Um, although yeah, flying types could. Uh, could come in big here as well, I think. Um, beat, beats a lot of frost last, doesn't it, James? Yeah, that's why it did so well for me. In Nightfall, you know, if you if you fight inside, you've beaten frost last. You're in a, a good spot, I think. Um, I'm expecting quite a lot of frost last in this meta. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, yeah. Frost last, if frost last is viable, frost last is always good. So if your fight inside can beat frost last, that's a good tick, I think. Yeah. I, I think I think Frostlass and and Pramnip have that sort of, both have that sort of thing where they both hit frightfully hard, and in a meta where all the things that have the most bulk are sort of banned, that only uh, increases sort of how hard they hit and, and fills them up. And uh, the versatility that Pramnip has with with the knife slashes is is, uh, is playing to it. the strengths there as well, isn't it? Um, Phil, I know you spoke about you spoke about Primate before on this, haven't you? Uh, Nightfall, Nightfall, yeah. Yeah. So uh, presumably you've got some experience using it, yeah. Yeah, I, I used it to, um, in my EBL lobby, and it was terrifying um, for me <laughs> <laughs> and and my opposition. Um, close combat just hits like a truck. It's got a massive attack stat, so I'd, I'd probably be favouring close combat. Um, so yeah, not just Frostlass, but we're going to be looking at Driftblame, um, Mandibuzz, um, uh, yeah, a, a fighter that can deal with flyers is phenomenal, so yeah, def- definitely viable. Yeah, I think it generally gets a shield in matchups it loses, so you can sort of use it on the lead and just take a shield advantage and go from there, or if you're switching in with a primate, no matter what they counter in, you're probably going to get a shield. So I think it always puts you in a good spot, even if you are going to lose the matchup. It's, it's a cracking plan B. It's definitely a cracking plan B. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Um, any any further thoughts on, on Primeape? No? Well, let's move on to, to Trudy's pick, which, which we've already touched on uh, quite quite heavily. Guys, it's a frost last meta. <laughs> oh, I'm <in> shock! <laughs> Literally, Eleonora messaged me earlier today. She was like, I couldn't be bothered with this n- announcement. It's a Frost Lass meta! And it, if you love Frost Lass, it just, it just absolutely vires you up. Um, and of course, it does what it always... She, 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 sorry, she does what she always does in that. She is a really super strong finisher, um, particularly strong in the zeros. If you get a little bit of energy on her. In fact, we're, we're all maths geeks here, right? I prepared us to graph. Oh. <laughs> I prepared us a graph. So guys, this is one powder snow advantage in the zeros against the whole meta. Wow. Let's just observe. There's the Bibbrel down there. <laughs> yeah, the Bibbrel's in there somewhere. <laughs> the uh, 
the average battle rating is 717. I mean, you, like that's like major, major overkill, but that actually does mean that she can take out two things in the zeros. And just... Um, fighting types, you talked about fighting types being good and yes, Primate beats her in ones and twos, but she takes Primate in the zeros. Yeah. Because one Night Slash doesn't kill, but one Avalanche really does. So it's um, two Primates, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, through to next week. <laughs> um, but she, like, she puts all of the dragons in all, in all, like, all of the dragons have at least one shield situation where she beats them, and all but one of the fighters she had a shield in the to beat. It was Pig Knight. I mean, I don't think I'm really worried about Pig Knight, but that's fine. Um, it's like, for example, in, for Bla against Blaziken, she wins the twos, because she gets to the third avalanche before Blaziken gets to the third blaze kick. And by that point, Blaziken has taken enough powder snow damage that an avalanche knocks it out. So is this with one that... extra powder snow? No. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Honestly, funny... so all that so that means apart from Pig Knight, who's bringing Pig Knight? Don't. Me. Um, she beat. <laughs> she beats all of she beats all the fighters in at least one of the shield situations. So if you know your matchups, she's not she she actually can pull some stuff around. Um, it's it's just it's a cup that suits her so well because charm attracts charm being out. Sorry, fairies being out attracts the fighters and the. Dragons and she beats them both. And she beats them both. She just beats them both. And then she looks cute doing it. Yeah, any any anyone got any thoughts on, on Trust Lass? And by the way, I want you to put the little you can put her little face up, but can you put the little um graph on the screen please, Matthew? I, I'll do my best really to remember, yes. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Phil, uh, James, any any thoughts? I, I think we just saw in Nightfall how good Frostlass can be. I think it's going to be similar here. CMP is just... It winning CMP against nearly everything helps so much. And like, if you yeah. can get that one powder snow advantage, as truly said, I think, well, is anything going to beat you to the move? So then you sort of guarantee to get a shield. Yeah, because not only are the bulky things banned, but the spammy things are banned as well. Like Polytoad's gone here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, Phil, any thoughts? I, I, I love Frostlass. I'm a big fan of Frostlass. Um, I was very upset that Frostlass and Primate and your pick were taken. Um, so, yeah. That's interesting. I, I would have thought my pick might have flown a bit under the radar, but, but that's for later. Uh, when we get to your pick, I'll explain why my head went to your pick. Um, but yeah, I, I love Frostlass. But yeah, I, I think Frostlass, uh, yeah, in, in recent memory, it was great in Nightfall Cup. Um, I also want to uh, look back at, at Sorceress Cup as well, which was which was my favourite Sylph Cup so far, I, I think, um, where Frostlass was also amazing and where basically Azumarill was more or less the only thing that could switch into it that wasn't super league, super walled by something else or or you know had serious serious flaws um and even then we, we saw how much shadow balls do um so i'm i'm almost almost certain i'll be running a frost last uh, if not i'll be trying desperately to make it work in practice um it's it's just an incredible incredible mom like it's a, a, a um Rank seventeen in the silver, in the PV Pope rankings. Horror, absolute horror. Is that is that they, because they, the cast forms up there? Ah, oh, that's true. Yeah, they always run reiterations and, and realise some things are. And I feel like it's snowy cast form down, cross glass up, isn't it? Yeah, I wonder. But why there I... are loads of things. Like to be fair, there are loads of things in the meta still that like super duper burn through frost and burn. Oh, I'm so funny. Um, through Frostlass. Like, 
K9, if you if you run into a Canto 9 Tales, it's like, oh God, I'm, I'm so sorry I even travelled to Yale. Um, you know, it, that's, it's fast and it's hard hitting. And so there are plenty of things that beat it, but to have it as a pivot in a team with things that can handle some of its uh, counters, yeah, like it's just it's just gonna be awesome. Yeah, I think it's it's an interesting point about those those counters, like particularly the fire types. Like obviously, fire we just types. labyrinth is a really really open meta, and we are seeing fire types. But I, I think that the lack of, of fairy typing is huge because as, as you say trudy it opens it up to dragons and darks and and fighters and all of a sudden that despite the despite it not being a matter of given types it's the fact that those those types are now stronger i think will will sort of form a matter and uh at first glance i'm not really sure how how fighting how, how fire fits into that um Maybe it's got a place taking on ice, but Lapras and, and Celio are always popular in as ice picks, aren't they? So and Dugong as well. Um, so it's I, I feel like how popular is grass going to be? Well, yeah, exactly. Uh, gra grass feels like it could be a, a struggle. Um, rock. Uh, will we see many SmackDown users when Primate looks like it's going to be one of the best things in the meta? A lot of the good steel types are banned. Yeah, it's just it, it's things are just lining up nicely, and um, finding hard counters for Frostlass uh, feels like it's going to be a difficult task here. Uh, yeah. Cool. Any any final thoughts? Uh, just look at pairing her with either K9 or with. Uh, polyrath, that's what I would say. That's polyrath my or canine. Why, why, why polyrath or canine? I, they just they just work really well together. They've, they've got quite a lot of good cross. Can you hear my cat in the litter tray? I can hear your cat in the litter tray. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I decided that the cat was going to be quieter than my kids. Well, fair maybe. enough. Maybe or maybe not. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, they just work well together. No, just sorry. like pick up, pick up each other's weaknesses, spot yeah. each other quite nicely. Yeah, Polyrath I think looks like a particularly particularly strong one, um, which we could see it go under the radar. Actually, yeah. Fine, sorry. I was going to say just just because it, it could go under the radar because of the prominence of, of Primate. Uh, yeah, what yeah, are you okay. going to say, huh? James? I think it'll be interesting if people start bringing specific um, <laughs> Frostlass counters, literally just for the Frostlass, if it becomes yeah. so prevalent. So like you, you might see some K nines there, and their only role is to beat a frost us. And then yeah. Sort of playing around with that. Yeah. Over the course of the month, it's got. I feel like it's got. Uh, this meta's got quite a. A large chance of swing, swinging quite heavily. Uh, yeah. So it could be perhaps more than than any meta we've had so far, uh, potentially. Um, I don't know, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see for sure. Okay, well, my pick is uh, Perserka, which is a bit of an odd one, a bit of an odd ball. Um, ranked 33, I think, on the PV Poke rankings at the minute. And it doesn't immediately jump out, I don't think. But I guess it, it's more of a, a kind of anti-meta pick to where I think the meta might go. Uh, because with, with Fairies gone and a lot of the Steel types gone, we don't really have a huge amount of checks to dragon types outside of the ice types so i thought having a, a an interesting steel type might be a good place to start um and of course steel types pick up the ice types too so it's like the um the dragon counter that beats the other dragon counters so well i think there's i think there's some others out there as well um but, uh, for, the, for the most part it beats the dragons um and the ices um even Zvilus with shadow claw close combat you pick up the zeros and ones straight close combat uh twos there is a Zvilus bulk point on shadow claw i believe so uh going straight close combat versus Zvilus uh will be tricky um but it depends how good i've used your this virus is um 
Mandy um, Buzz is a bit of a tough one because you're doing uh, Shadow Claw and Foul Play, and Close Combat is neutral, and none of its moves has none of its moves have stab. I looked to play rough, um, just like forty percent to Mandy Buzz, so you're not flipping anything. Uh, so I, I think I think play rough's a no go. Um, no, I imagine many people won't have used Berserker before. I've only used it a couple of times. It's similar bulk to uh, things, you know, classically bulky mons like Hitmonchan, Flygon, Tyranitar. Yeah. It's it, it's not not massively <laughs> bulky. Somewhere between Frostloss and Primeape, um, and between that and between that and the non-stab on all of its moves, uh, Shadow Claw, Foul Play, and Close Combat, the stats aren't amazing. Uh, but it's sort of, and they get worse as you go further shields. So. Uh, seventy-five percent in the zeros, which is pretty good. Sixty-seven uh, percent in the ones, sixty-one percent in the twos. Um, but if you give it a two shadow claw advantage, you're up at eighty-two percent for the zeros and ones, which is which is pretty impressive. Um, the obvious oversight is that it's a steel type, and personally, I'm expecting primate to, or at least fighting types to be all over the place um, because. It hits hard, and because close combat is a beastly move, you only need one Shadow Claw advantage to beat Primeape in the zeros. Because you get uh, you get to the close combat before Primeape gets to its close combat, uh, and yours will kill it before. Whereas the Primeape's Night Slash won't kill you. Um, there's something else I was going to say as well, but it evades me. Um, I'm sure it'll come back to me. Uh, any any thoughts on uh, this Berserker? That's what it's called. <laughs> I I like Berserker. I thought of Berserker um, when it was announced. My, my head went okay. The the banning Sableye. Um, what other dark types of the band? Umbreon. So my head my head went straight to Hypno. So how how we beat how we beating Hypno? What other dark types are there? I thought hang on. A Sableye, which isn't a Sableye. So I started thinking about Gliscor. There's ice types everywhere. Berserker. So my head did go to Berserker um, as like this Sableye, which isn't a Sableye. I, I, I like it, yeah. Good nickname for it. The Sableye that isn't a Sableye. My name on that. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it, it's, it's, potentially, uh, it, it's potentially a really good Frostless counter as well. Which is worth mentioning. Sorry, James, I think okay, I interrupted yeah. you there. No, it's fine. Um, when you mentioned to me that you were talking about Berserker tonight, I think my reaction wasn't maybe what you were expecting. But then I went and looked at it, and it, it, it does a lot better than I thought it was going to. It surprised me. Um, I don't know if I've got one built for the Great League, but you never know in these practices, we'll, we might uh, give it a go. Because actually, it's got some... I think the wins it has are good wins. Mm. So, I, I, like, Frostlass is always a good win. Anything that can beat Frostlass, you can't, you're kind of going to want three or four of them. If possible, that's probably not even possible. Otherwise, your team comp's going to be so lopsided. Mm. So you definitely need some really good Frostlass counters, and that's one. So I think anything that does do that, you can't overlook, really. Yeah, sure. How do you feel about me me bigging up a big a big frostless counter through the No, I, well, I mean, I'm going to need some because everyone else is going to be bringing uh, frostless because because she's the best. Um, I think I used uh, her in one of the re rebooted self cards. Sinister two point oh. They came back. Sinister two point oh. Uh, and it was some of the quickest battles I have ever had because berserker on berserker, it's like nothing's happening. Boom! <laughs> Every, everyone's dead. Um, and it, it was a lot of fun to play um, as long as you won because if you didn't win, you couldn't remember anything that you did because it went so fast and you couldn't figure out what to do differently next time. So, like... <laughs> Yeah, I enjoyed using Berserker when I used Berserker, but I, yeah, but, okay, this cup. It beats Frostlass in all even shields, so it's, a, it's it's got legs. What I will say, I think Frostlass only needs a two 
two powder snow lead to flip it in two, I think. Uh, because it needs to land an, it needs to land a shadow ball. But it, if it if it double baits, uh, I, I think there are a lot of ifs in that sentence. There are a lot of ifs. <laughs> there, were, there are a lot of ifs. There were a lot of logical requirements that needed yeah. to happen right there. Yeah, but I, I feel like going for a bait versus berserk is fairly. Yeah. yeah, like Berserker's a mon that is, that you're going to have to shield. Although, to be fair, there's a lot of those in this meta. The, 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 the bulky stuff's gone, so you can't you can't ditch all your shields into one thing necessarily. Um, I, I think it's achievable. I think it's achievable to flip it around. Um, yeah, but the, oh, I remember the other, the other reason why I wanted to uh, why I wanted to dig it up now. So, in terms of things that counter primate, I think it makes a really good primate partner because if you look at things that beat primate you're looking at flyers and psychic types and uh berserker being a steel uh that knows ghost and dark moves make it it's like possibly outside of dark types uh, about as hard a hypno counter as you're likely to find um as we said it's, it's a good frost last counter which is you know, which is while it's evens versus primate, a lot of people might be sort of banking that as a matchup where okay, it's not a isn't uh, a primate counter, but it's it's decent. Like it's something I can fall back on. Um, and uh, yeah, dragon uh, dragonite I think could be a, a popular um, popular primate counter, and it picks up that as well. So it's, it's it could potentially do work as a as a primate bodyguard as well, so I think it, it might have to play there. Um, and the, the last thing that I really like about it is that it has close combat, not superpower, because I, I hate superpower. I think it's awful unless it unless it's unless it absolutely has to be there. I, I don't I don't want to use superpower, but close combat, this is it. All your eggs are in that basket. They are fine. You shielded one, great. But if I get to another one, you're still going to have to shield that. Whereas Superpower. I'm not only am I uh, still fairly unlikely to get to another one because I've had the defense drop, as, as I have with, with close combat, to be fair. But if I do get there, the, super, the next superpower is not going to hurt as much. So uh, I think close combat is a much better move than, than superpower, which I think. Yeah, I, I def definitely fancy Berserker over Mel Metal. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I, th I think. Um, I think the foul play is, is really nice as well. I think I was looking at Mel Metal and I thought uh, I thought it could be walled quite easily. Um, I, think, I forget what it was. There was, there was something that might have been Toxic Rope that just like completely obliterates um, completely obliterates Mel Metal in terms of walling it. Whereas uh, Berserker can at least land. Uh, well, I guess it, that it's it's walled as well. But Shadow Claws are there and, and close combat hits really hard. So. Uh, it's not not like it. Not like it. There's also quite a shortage of ground types, isn't there? So that like this, that does work in the favour of Berserker a bit. Yeah, yeah, because with with uh, with the big steel types banned, whereas before, whereas in often in open open Great League, you might see a, a counter user and a and a ground type. Uh, with mm. the big steel types banned, perhaps people are going to be a bit a bit lighter on the steel counters. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I think I think it could have some good players as a, as an anti meta mom. Cool. Any any further thoughts on on Pizzerka? No, I like it. Primate bodyguard. I will remember that one. Primate, yeah, <laughs> I shouldn't I shouldn't be giving you ideas. You of all people haven't <laughs> faced your primate just, a couple of times. I'm just taking notes right now. This is my six. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it, it's it, it's. I think it's a good place to start for a team. Certainly, I think Primate Berserker could be a solid start for sure. Um, yeah. Well, should we move on to your pick, Phil? Yeah. So we've got we've got a fighter, an ice ghost, a steel type, which is pretending to be a dark ghost type. Um, and given there's no furries out there, I've gone for Pokédex entry 230. Kingdra. Kingdra. 
Now this is this is well down the rankings. And I'm known as Mr. Spice. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be making someone very unhappy here, Phil. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I know. I know. One of my closest, uh, dearest battler friends uh, is a big fan of Kingdra as well. However, I I also like Kingdra. Um, no furries. Yes, there'll be some steals out there, but who's gonna who's gonna resist a, an outrage from Kingdra? It's a, it's a good question. <laughs> it's a great question. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, so whether you want to use it as a as a two shield switch or a gain shield advantage in the zeros, whether it's as a closer or on switch as well, I, I think it's a fantastic mod. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you told me you were going to use Kingdra, I had a quick look at what makes it in the twos. It's not a very long list. Not a very long list at all. Uh, no, and if you've got a couple of turns advantage, it it, it gets even. Slimmer. Mm. It's like eighty-six percent with like three three dragon breaths, three turns. Yeah, and those things you can possibly take in taking the zeros as well, potentially as well. So, um, obviously it's it's a dragon type, right? Um, it's not weak to ice, which is nice because the water type in does that. Um. Does that, you, do you think, make it easier to run with another dragon? Say Dragonite or Xylus? Because that that was where my initial thinking was with, with this. I thought, this looks like Timeless Cup, double dragon. Oh wait, they're all weak to ice. Correct. King Correct. Uh, yeah, Kingdra and Dragoner, Kingdra and Xylus, maybe all three. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Let's go crazy. <laughs> go crazy. Let's go crazy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead, I'm going to lead uh, Dragoner. All right, there's your, there's your prime map started. Right, okay. Oh, it's not prime map. Okay, it's Kingdra. Um, yeah, it, it's doable. I do like Zwilus as well. It's up there with uh, Mandy at the top of the list at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but there's going to be a lot of counter users. Um, so Zwilus, I'm a bit. Yeah. Mm. See, I, I I really like Kingdra. Oh, sorry, Trudy. I really love using Zwilus. Uh, I'm using Zwilus this season in uh, Labyrinth and it absolutely bites. It's just, if you, when you get it right, it just goes so right because it is fast and everything hurts. Oh, I love using it. I mean, it has body slam, whereas King Drake is much slower to walk to Zuko, isn't it? And then Dragonair is rap. Oh, Aqua Tail. Like, yeah. yeah. But I, I feel like Kingdra is one of those ones. If, we, if you're going to use it, you've got to have a, a preset strategy in mind. Um, what, what I think it could be really useful for is like we see a lot of uh, perhaps not strictly ABB lines like we do in GBL. But if you have a if you lead something, you tend to put like two counters in the back to its biggest weakness or something like that. And leading Kingdra and destroying that one thing and in the lead can then open up the back of a line quite quite well. Uh, as well as using it to win switch, so um, I think it's a really, really handy mod in terms of uh, building a strategy within your within your game three. Um, I think I, I don't know. I, I, I'm I really like it. I'm not sure. I, I don't think I'd want more than one dragon. Um, it's it, it's the fact it's just that little bit slower. Yeah. That's holding it back. Isn't it? Yeah, I think. And, if, and you, do you do you use your shields? Do you not? There's a little bit of jeopardy, but um, but yeah, it's it's got play. Doctor Zuka's what fifty energy, isn't it? Um, so yeah. it's not it's not cheap, but it's it's better than sixty in it. So you, you know you can stack two of them if if by some miracle that happens, uh, that makes that's that's going to be a nice surprise. And I mean, it, oh, it's it's a busted move. You know, it's a hundred percent success rate that uh, <laughs> back up, isn't it? It is if you use two. That's how it works, right? Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Two times massive. Yeah, yeah, it <laughs> it's a Pokemon you don't want your opponent to have because you know as soon as you see that switch in, say stop King Grey, even if you counter it, that hundred percent debuff comes in. You know, they, your opponent after the game will say, "Oh, that's the first time I've got all tournament." But it's always <laughs> <against me. laughs> it always happens against me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, and you shielded it as well. Shielded the Octazooka and took the Divas. 
Yeah, just have a look at the Berserker matchup now, just to, just, just to see how that does. Um, looks like Berserker has to land there. I oh, know it can go straight foul play. Okay, so that's that's encouraging. I've got something there to take it in twos. I, I think it I, does its job as an anti dragon. Yes, it does. It does for sure. Um, I, I think there's a bit of danger to be to be had in running Kingdra as a stage switch because um, unless you it often because it's quite slow, often you're only taking the one shield back and you're reliant on uh, landing or getting an outrage off on the next thing to to even out those shields. And if you don't if you don't get to that outrage, you're at switch advantage and shield disadvantage and energy disadvantage. Um, so you're at switch advantage, but energy and shield disadvantage. Which with like certainly when it comes to the like, the, the, the few bulky things that are around, things like Mandibuzz and, and Lapras, could potentially be a problem. Um so I, I feel like that's something to watch out for if you can use it as, as a safe switch. You've got to, got to sort of build your team accordingly. Yeah, it's 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 more of a generalist. It doesn't quite doesn't look quite pick off your frost last. Doesn't quite pick off your Mandy Buzz. Yeah. Maybe range your team of six off if you're looking for hmm. like a sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you not use this strategy? It's like, uh, oh, I'll just give away this mom to save this mom. No. Uh, oh, oh, I see. I see what I see what you mean now. I was gonna say next time I pick something really bad, like like Gallade in like in last cup. I'll say I'll I'll just remember to add on at the end, and if not, and if all else, you can sack it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that. It's fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a valid strat. It, it is. It is for sure. It's, yeah, it's, it's gonna. Your opponent's gonna have a. Certainly gonna have. Similar to Frostlass, they're gonna have like one or maybe two particularly th like one or two things in particular that they're gonna want to line up against Kindra. So it's it's a good way of of, of drawing things out potentially. It's just, as I say, it's just about and um, getting that strategy right to to be able to take advantage of that. Um, yeah, diverting it away from the other dragon you've got in the backs. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you about that because, I mean, I think I think you said it'd be good to run it with double dragon. I, if you have only got room for one dragon, um, I, I think it has, in terms of its resistances, a lot of competition because obviously Vilas completely shuts down psychic types. Uh, Dragonite. It's going to be a, a counter to that, to that um, primate and Kingdra. Well, I mean, you said it's a dex. It's a, you said it's it's a generalist, um, and and that may that may affect its usage a little bit. Um, I kind of think, yeah, it, it's a good one to stick on the, the end of your team as a sixth. But I, it's always one where I, I think, unless your team is really balanced and you're really happy with it. Where and to the point where adding a Dragonite or a Zylus is going to throw that balance off a little bit. Um, I, I feel like it's going to be difficult to justify bringing it over Zylus or Dragon, Dragon, Dragonite's a good show. Um, from from early early tests, a couple of a um, couple of battles here in the. I'm seeing Galvantula. I'm seeing obviously your fighters Toxy uh, Primate. So I'm a bit cautious with the wireless, a bit cautious with the... I think I think Dragonair is probably the best dragon, in my opinion. Dragonair? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. What, what, do you, what do you guys think? We know what Trudy's going to say. Dragon Pulse or Rap? Oof. Um, <laughs> There's a question. I, I'm answers. currently rocking Dragon Pulse, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll probably do a little bit more diving on that. <laughs> I've just written down Dragonair and he needs to know what to write next to it. <laughs> <laughs> I used a Shadow Dragonair in Chronicles and... Ooh, so frustration. I... Sorry? So you're using frustration? No. Oh, damned one. Um, but are you mocking me, Philip? No! No, I would never do that. You scare me, Philip. <laughs> But it really, it like, it absolutely are wallops. 
uh, everything. Uh, but it's flimsy AF. So, like, if you wanted to play with something that's like risking your life and limb, then I recommend playing with Shadow Dragonair with frustration. Yeah, none of them are particular. None of the dragons are particularly bulky, are they? Um, no. Yeah, just checking. Yeah, Kingdra's Kingdra's significantly bulkier than, than Dragonair, to be fair. So it's interesting. I I put Dragonair at the bottom of the dragon pile personally. Um, I mean, I've, I've, having not played a single game here, um, but I just I just think between the resistances that you're going to get from Zwilus or Dragonite and the uh, the nice generalist two shield matchups or zero shield matchups of a Kingdra. Um, I just don't know how popular Psychic's going to be. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. But I think Zvilus is also the, the King fighters. Dragon. But the fighters will be, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which which I think... It's, it's, it's tricky. The, the, the Dragon slot... Dragon's been so good here. The Dragon slot's going to be quite a, an interesting pick. Do you know what? I, I've got an initial draft of six, and there, there isn't a dragon there. Uh, yeah, there isn't a dragon there, which is which is horrendous. Given how happy I am that there's no uh, no no fairies, but um, I think the one I would <laughs> go for, I think, would be personally. I think I'm favouring Dragonite at the minute, uh, but yeah. yeah, I think I think the old Your Shadow Dragonite or Veil Dragon. Uh, do you know, I've not looked into it, but I suspect. I suspect the vanilla one here, to be honest. Um, I think so. I used I used the shadow version in Sunrise, and bulkier stuff was around then, and you perhaps needed that extra punch to to, to take some of the matchups. I suspect here you perhaps don't because things aren't quite as bulky, um, and maybe having a bit extra bulk yourself might be more beneficial, especially when you're trying to use it for its defensive capabilities in terms of resisting counter. Um, so it's not something I've looked into yet, but it's something I, I will look into. Um, but yeah, no, the, the dragons are seriously interesting, and uh, there's quite a lot of um, quite a lot of bits and bobs that they all do differently. So it'll be interesting to see how that one works out. Cool. Any 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 final thoughts on on uh, Kingdra or, or any any other ones we've we've talked about tonight? No. Yeah, don't run Kingdra, run one of the other three <laughs> Jay's not going to be happy. He was a primate last time. No, he's not. He's, he's, he's going to be absolutely hating it. Um, no, I, I think to summarise, it's a closer. Outrage, out of everything. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Dragon Claw. Uh. <laughs> It's not quite gonna. It's, it's you know you, you're gonna tickle. You're gonna tickle a Lapras with a dragon claw, aren't right? you? You're not gonna get to a dragon claw with a, <laughs> with a Lapras. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? It's, it's always difficult doing these soon after the meta's dropped. But uh, which is why I'm glad we've all picked fairly different things because I feel like we've we spoke about a lot. But uh, yeah, be interesting to see how it goes. Cool. Right. Well. Well. Unless anyone's got any final thoughts, we'll leave it there. 